So we are back and on today's video, I know I asked in the last video, we're gonna be showing overclocks and I've got a great way to actually find the best overclocks for your machine. So a lot of people I asked around on Twitter, I asked around on YouTube and in some discords, a lot of people were saying that it's very chip dependent. I kind of knew that already, but I didn't think that there was much difference between all of the chips to a certain degree. And obviously if you have you know, something like a uh, Supra that we have here, your chip's not going to be overly worse than the one that we have here. There just might be very bad ones and there might be very good ones that can run at higher hash rates. So I found a program that is going to enable us to actually benchmark all of the frequencies and all of the core voltages together. And I'm going to show you how to set it up. It does take quite a while, so stick around for this whole video. But we're going to be doing it for all three of these currently i've already tested it on the gamma and the supra i kind of quit it halfway on that to record the video but today we're going to be doing a full test on the bitax max and it does require a lot of setup but i'm going to try run you through it as much as i can and hopefully we go from there so let's head over to the computer and i'll show you this amazing script that we found and i'll show you who created it as well so let's get over there now so I firstly want to give a shout out to this user on X. He's very active in the Bitax Worldwide uh, community on X. And he just dropped this, I think it was about eight hours ago, after I made my video talking about overclocks. So I did ask you guys to put them in the comments and stuff like that. But after asking on X as well, people were saying about the chip dependency, silicon lottery. Not everyone is going to be able to copy your overclocks necessarily because they don't have the same alterations that you have in terms of heat sinks, ambient temperature in the room, and the certain fans or heat sinks on the back on the voltage regulator and stuff like that. So this is a way for you guys to do it yourself and figure out the best overclock for just your machine and not based on anyone else's overclocks. So I've made a couple of videos on how to overclock the bitax, but this is probably the best video that I'm gonna produce about it because this gives you basically the very best figures that you can find for your bit axe currently. So it says here, if you don't know how effective the cooling is, I think this was in regards to a different question, use this benchmark. And it also says integrated much more relevant measure values into the evaluation, the temperature of the regulators, because the ASIC cooling is usually not that big of a problem. As always, read the documentation first, use the benchmark correctly, happy testing. So this is on GitHub. And it's basically a hash rate benchmark testing. So it tests for highest hash rate and highest efficiency, which is really great. And I know that it was talking about the cooling solutions, but this is probably one of the easiest ways to produce your best overclocks that you can find on your machine currently. So it says here, a Python based benchmarking tool for optimizing BitAx mining performance by testing different voltage and frequency combinations while monitoring hash rate, temperature and power efficiency. So here are the features, automated benchmarking, temperature monitoring and safety cutoffs, that's very important. Power efficiency calculations, automatic saving of benchmark results, graceful shutdown with best settings and Docker support for easy development. So for all of you out there that don't really have experience with running Python code, don't worry. I literally set this up in about two hours. I'm going to run you through kind of all the problems I encountered. And I basically have no knowledge of running codes like this. I have knowledge of, you know, command line batch files and stuff like that, but nothing like this that I set up today. So prerequisites, you have to have Python 3.11 or higher access to the bitax miner on your network and the docker is optional i didn't use docker in this so i don't think you're gonna have to use that so first thing that you want to do is download python i'm going to leave links in the description for everything step by step so this will be at the top of the description the github will be up there as well and then as we go down so python you want to download the latest version and install it just go through click everything okay but there is one thing that you need to click so so once you install it you want to actually open it you can see it here in the downloads if it loads up so python whatever version it is if you double click it now it is going to 
modify next. So this is the main thing that you want to do is you want to add Python to environment variables. That's very important for this. If you do the normal install, I believe it doesn't tick this. So you need to have this ticked and I'll show you kind of why that is later on in the video. But when you're installing it, you need to have that ticked. That's basically how I did it. So it should work for you. So we're going to cancel that. And once you've installed that, you need to install Windows PowerShell. Now you can do it on through other things, but, but this is just the main way that I did it. So if you already have Windows PowerShell, that's fine. But there are multiple ways to get it. So I'll leave this linked in the description. But this is basically a guide using Winget or any other things that you see down here. It's a very easy guide to follow. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but you basically install it and you run these. So you, so you copy and paste them in, press enter, and it should download all of it basically. So those are the two things that you need. You need Windows PowerShell and Python just updated to the version 3.11 or higher. So once you have both of them downloaded, there is one more step that you got to check. And in the search bar, you have to check for edit environment variables for your account. So we click in here and what you want to look for is something that says path by right here, click edit. And you want to make sure that you have Python 1.31, whatever version you're working with. And it has to say scripts here and it has to have Python there. And additionally, I think you have to have the launcher as well, but I'm not sure. So you have to have all three of those. So again, if you just search in your search bar, environmental variables and click on path, that will show you if it's in there. And do you want to move it to the top, I believe? So if we click back in here, go to path and click edit, you want to move all of these up. If they're down below here, you want to move them up to here. I don't necessarily know what that does. As I said, I'm not an expert, but that made it work for me. And then our next step is to go into Windows PowerShell. So we're going to open it up as an administrator. And then you're basically going to copy the installation that we see here. So it should look all kind of like this, I guess. And what you want to do is copy and paste git clone. So if we just copy this right there and we open this up here, that's going to copy it to there. You click enter. And then the next one you want to click on this if you're on Windows, but this if you're on Linux or Macs. So just copy this and then you do the same thing. Enter it in there after obviously clicking this. So I'll just show you what it looks like if you click OK here. So we can delete this out and click OK. It says fatal destination path already exists is not an empty directory. So we've already got it there. But next after that, we'll just create a path there and then you copy and paste this in. So it would be like this Python M Venu Venu. I don't really know what that means, but you click enter on that. And then last step is to wait for that all to run up and then copy and install the latest installment of pip. So do the same thing. Just paste it in there again after it's actually spun up. And that's pretty much it in terms of actually installing it. So once you've done all that, it should be all installed. Now, the problems that I encountered was enabling this machine to actually run all these scripts. I believe that there's a command out there. I feel like a lot of people are going to run into this problem. So maybe I'll leave it in the comments below. But let me know kind of what step you get up to in terms of one, two or three and I'll try to help you out from there. But if you kind of go through this and it's all set up properly, then perfect. You've basically installed it. And then the only thing that you have to do now is open up Windows PowerShell, run as administrator, click OK. And then to actually get into the file, you want to CD bit X. So you just want to copy this part and that points it to that directory, I guess, whatever it is. And then next you want to just type in this and this is for standard usage. I believe that this is on Windows. Don't include these two brackets because I believe that that is for Linux or Macs. I don't really know, but 
you can see here we have this and then it says bitax ip so we want to type in the ip for the bitax for example we have our max which is here and you can see the ip at the top so it's 192.168.4.70 so just 192.168 and 4.70 so once we hit enter on this it's actually going to start the bitax running at different frequencies and voltages and then it's going to produce a table so you can see if we click enter now it's going to go through select the core voltage that we're currently at and then it's going to set it down to here at the voltage of 115 and the frequency of 500 megahertz and then it's going to give it around 20 minutes to check this overclock and then move on to a next one at the end of it once it's completed kind of its run that's when it will give you your results for it now it does have kind of settings to stop the temperatures going too high so i think it's limited at 66 degrees so keep an eye on your bit axe whilst this is also running because it does have control over your bit axe and there is a slight possibility that it goes over the top and it burns out some of the components but that is a very very slight possibility i wouldn't be afraid of running it at least up until you can see here this is one that we had earlier if we go down to the bottom this is for the gamma currently and it says here voltage regulator temperature exceeded at 86 degrees stopping current benchmark so it does have some fail safes in there to stop when the kind of system is too hot or something like that you can see it working on this overclock currently so core voltage 1150 and frequency 500 then it gives you the hash rate and the temperatures there. So it's gonna check all these overclocks. You can see it for the gamma here. Let's just close this down. This is the figures for the gamma currently. You can see it tested all of these different overclocks as we go down and it started at there, I believe. So 1150 and 500, that's the standard start that it's gonna start at. And then it ramps stuff up after that. So you can see it keeps going up in the frequency as we keep scrolling down and it got to this frequency and then it cut off. We have the same thing happening for the Supra here. So we actually cut this one off ourselves to make the video. It starts out at 1150, 500, and then it goes to 1170, 475, and it tests basically everything there in all the variations. And if we go down here, even if you stop it as well, so we can scroll down to the bottom here, if you stop it, it will actually spit out the result for when you stopped. We got to 1550 at 700 on the Supra and we just stopped it there and it said BitAx results top five, top five highest hash rate settings. So this is basically going to be the highest hash rate settings and it's going to give you the best overclock for hash rate and then below it's going to give you the best overclock for efficiency. So I want to give a shout out as well to whoever made this uh, on github mrv777 this is an amazing program for somebody that's not really intuitive in terms of coding or even intuitive in running windows powershell this is a very easy setup at least for me as i said if you guys are having any problems whatsoever leave them in the comments below and i'll really try to help you out if not i might have to make another video with a full reset where we actually go through the whole thing. But let's analyze some of the top five hash rates that we're getting. So rank one, this is basically the highest hash rate we achieve, and this is for the gamma. You have core voltage at 1150 and frequency 625. We might have to make some altercations to allow it to exceed that after putting some heat sinks or some back fans on there. So average hash rate is about 1.3 terahash. Average temperature is 53 degrees and efficiency is 15.17 joules per terahash. So kind of in line with what the chip should be looking at in terms of efficiency. But we already know we don't really want efficiency. It doesn't necessarily matter on these smaller machines. Then you can see rank two, we have the frequency at 675 and 1317. Higher temperature, higher efficiency as well. So it's not as good and it ranks them by top five. And then it moves down to top five most efficient settings if you want them. And you can see here core voltage 
frequency, the amount of hash rate, so 1.238, the temperature and the efficiency right there. So this is probably one of the best ways to give you guys overclocks if you set this up yourself because it is very chip dependent and dependent on kind of what modifications you've made to your bit axe and it'll give you the very best settings that you can have. Obviously the frequency and the core voltage they go up in increments but I believe that you can change it if you look down here. So the script includes several configuration par parameters maximum chip temperature so you can change all of these basically uh, voltage increment is 20 and frequency increment is 25 so that's how much it can add or decrease every time that it resets and does a different overclock and then the vr temperature is 86 and chip temperature is 66 so it won't allow you to go above that unless you tell it to in the parameters so let's just go through and see kind of what our currently highest ranking settings are for the gamma. So currently for highest hash rate, we have 1330. Core voltage is 1150 and frequency is 625. I am going to try run a different test where we allow the VR temperature to go a little bit higher because I feel like we can get way more out of this because you can see here Giga hash is 1.6. I'm sure if this finished, it would have given us the best rate right here. And then secondly, we have the Supra here. So the highest hash rate that we hit was 877. Frequency is 625 and core voltage is 1230. And that was only because we stopped it. So we could have let it go. But for video purposes, that's kind of what our highest one was. And as we said, we're currently running this one in the background and it's testing this overclock. So it's going to keep testing them and find an average between all of them. So what we're going to do is obviously test out your own ones. If you need help with how to set this up, please feel free to put it in the comments and I'll try to guide you through it. Or just shoot me a message on either Discord or on X and I'll try to help you out as well. So we're kind of going to go away and really push these. So we're going to set some parameters. I just thought I'd make this video because I think it's one of the best ways to find pretty much the best overclocks. Obviously, there are some parameters you can edit to, fi to actually find the best ones, but currently it looks like this is a nice foundation block to go off in terms of the core voltage and frequency. As I said, we're going to let this run for all of them over the next day or two, because it does take quite a while to get these results. And we're going to try to edit some parameters and come out with pretty much the best overclocks that we can find in terms of hash rate just for our machines as i said at the start of the video not everyone's machine is the same so we're just going to be doing it for our machines but if you do get this up and running please let me know in the comments kind of what you got out of it and make sure to leave the bitax version that you're using as well so as i said i'll leave everything in the comments below that you need and if you want to try run this yourself please let me know how you get on with it and please let me know kind of what hash rates you get as well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you have any problems, just drop them in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video.